In this video, I'm going to be taking you inside my head, teaching you what I think and why I do what I do in a full online game of Madden 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. Now, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what my channel is about, my channel is all about becoming a better Madden player in Madden 21. And so if you want to get better at the game, go ahead and hit the subscribe button at the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. I'm really, really excited to jump into today's video with you guys because I'm doing a couple of things differently on both sides of the ball. So really excited to share that with you. Um, running a little bit more of the nickel 335 wide defense, which you guys know is in, um, or a defense that I wrote uh, several months ago. And if you want to pick up that defense, that link is in the description. I'm doing a couple of different things with match coverages and things like that. So really excited to talk through some of that stuff as it comes up. So anyways, if you have any questions about anything you see in the video, just feel free to shoot me a text message. My number is in the description. All right, guys, so we're going to come out early and just run some simple cover four defense here. And we're going to get a nice pick right off the bat with Darnell Savage. He was running the spacing concept. Now it's just kind of a, you know, single back bunch, a little quick pass right off the bat. And we're able to get the pick. Now, if you are running the bunch tight end, you're in for a treat. I've got some new concepts and things like that that I've been working on out of the bunch tight end. It's prob it's probably my most um, effective offense I've ever released. And the reason why is partially because we just keep it very, very simple. And again, that is in the description of this video as well. But really, it's not just PA all across. A lot of people say, well, you're just running. Not, not even the case at all. I actually hardly run that play now. Like... My favorite play is probably tight end corner just because everybody is going to expect you to run PA all cross. And so because of that expectation, you're able to oftentimes hit them with this tight end corner play. Um, the delay routes are super effective and super glitchy against man-to-man -man coverage. I did some videos on that uh, that are on the way, kind of showing why I would recommend using delay phase and delay flat routes over regular flat routes. I think it just makes a huge, 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 huge difference. You see right there again, the guy running, the man up on the running back guy did not guard him and we're able to get a nice little, uh, nice little combination there. So, uh, so far, you know, kind of offensively right here, we're just trying to capitalize on, uh, the turnover, really not trying to do anything more than just that right there. Um, and I absolutely love this, this uh, this little formation right here, single back trio uh, in the red zone. It is probably my favorite formation to go to, um, even though it's still a three wide receiver set, even though people can still stop the run. It has some really nice quick passes, both on the right side and on the left side. It really puts the user in a bind. It's very difficult for the defense to be able to user this, uh, this combination here. We're going to show you one of them right here. This is a concept um, that we really, really like in the red zone. It's basically just simply a curl. Uh, we're going to use a quick out here to the tight end. We get a lot of run commits too down here. Look at that right there. And we're able to get that quick route out to the tight end and able to get on top early uh, in this game. So uh, right now I'm going to go through, and this is what I like to do You know, on my first drive especially. Whenever I score, I like to go through and basically just set up everything. So uh, for example, I'll set up strong flood. I'll set up you know the four verticals. Where's the verticals play? Vertical tight end cross. I'll set up my gun doubles, all of those things. Um, and again, if you want to get the full scheme uh, for this offense, it is in the description of this video. But all in all, guys, so far, great start. Can't really ask for anything better. Very first play of the game, we get a pick. Um, don't expect that. You know, again, when we get back on the defense side of the ball, I was running a lot of man coverage. I'm back to zone. Um, I'm a zone player. I love zone. That's what I like to play. The reason I like zone so much is I feel like it's very deceptive. You can disguise it. You can customize it. You can change it too. Um, you know, and so that's some of the things I like to adjust out of zone, not out of man. That's just my personal preference. Um, there's a great argument to be made for both. Uh, man coverage is very effective this year. Zone coverage, I believe, is still effective. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people don't realize. I think that defense, all in all, and re you know, really to be effective, you have to understand how to do it all. You have to understand how to do zone. You have to understand how to run man. You have to understand how to run match coverage. You have to understand what are, what zones take away what. What routes are is he using? What are the route combos? Because it all comes back to that chess 
and counter or, or punch counter punch and and really i teach it more as like grass where where is the grass that he's attacking is he attacking the flats is he attacking the corner is he attacking the crosser like what are the big things what are the big things that he's attacking and then you just basically try to take that away so we always want to force our opponent um essentially to play you know left-handed that's really the goal here so anyways we're going to come out in some more cover four now he's coming out in trips tight end right here um, one of the beauties of the 335 wide is what you just saw. The run defense is super effective. Um, I don't really struggle a lot against the run because I have nickel normal, 335 wide, and 335 normal all at my disposal at the line of scrimmage, uh, which to me is the best combination of three defenses because it just it just does make it you know very very difficult. Here he's going to go spacing again, trying to hit his curls, trying to hit his curls, trying to hit his curls. He's going to take off with Mahomes and good read now. Uh, I'm surprised that he ran that twice. He actually had the curl routes open. I think it's his. I think that might be like his go-to zone beater. So when he goes down a single like bunch, that's where again you know it might be worth it to man people up out of this. It's just again choosing you know picking and choosing when to do that uh, is part of the battle. But on defense again, one of the things that you want to really master is you can't lose the game or you can't win the game in the first quarter, right? So I got to pick. Um, I can't, I can't win the game in the first quarter. I can definitely lose it. Um, you know, so really what we're trying to do is just keep him in front of us, make sure that he doesn't get anything over the top, force him to have to drive a little bit, and just kind of see what he's going to do. We're not going to overplay anything. You're not going to see a whole lot of, like, five-yard hook zones or anything like that. Um, that's not something that I like to do early on. Here, um, that's a good read. One of the biggest challenges with uh, the cover four, and that's where I almost think to almost adjust it, but the one thing that I think can give this cover four defense hard time is these compression sets, like these little tight offset type things, uh, this corner route, you know, different things like that. And he is looking like he's going to throw drags and drags and drags. Now, when we get down here in this 18-yard area, really once we get down into the 10 area, you'll see that I will, I will change a little bit of how I'm going to play this. Uh, right here, actually, we're going to change off on him a little bit. We're going to go to a little bit of a Mabel uh, cover two style defense here and just trying to take away that corner. And uh, he's going to check it down to the drag. Good read by him. And I'll give the drag up. I'll be, I'm okay. If they want to take their drags all game long, I'm cool with that. Uh, I'm not too stressed out about a drag route. What I'm way more stressed out about is, um, you know, some type of, of, of deep route being able to being able to beat me. So that's the biggest thing that, you know, my area, my pinpoint of stress right here. And let's see if he's going to try to get the corner, and he's going to run with Mahomes. That's, good. that's cool. So, see, and this is what we've done, and it doesn't look like, you know, it's like, oh, he's driving, he's driving, he's driving. Well, what we've done is we've forced him to have to drive. We forced him to have to drive. Now we got a red zone situation, red zone opportunity, and it is really, really hard for people to score in the red zone if they can't run the ball. If they can run the ball, that's one thing. If they can't run the ball, it's a completely other ball game. So this is where I really, really like to essentially go man coverage and kind of try to tighten it up just a little bit here. Um, and see here, he's going to run right down the middle. We're able to stop it, and that's that 3-3-5 wide defense that I'm talking about uh, just as far as the run defense goes. I am actually working on a little bit of a red zone style defense. It's basically just using this um, – it's basically just using this, this – um, oh, gosh, what's it called? 4-4 four, four split uh, in situations, and it's more of like inside the 5. Uh, up until the 5-yard line, I feel pretty good. So, anyway, it looks like he's going to go to some uh, – Looks like he's going to go to the air again. This is probably going to be spacing. You have 100% spacing, and we're just going to sit on him. We're going to click that in and try to go get this guy. He's going to roll out, let him go, and there we go. That's pretty decent defense. I feel like he actually got a lot of time in the pocket there, and so we were able just to kind of adjust out of that. That's going to bring up a third and goal on the five-yard line. So a lot of opportunities, a lot of different things that we can do. What I'm probably going to do, because, again, you have to think about what are they going to run, what are they going to run, what are they going to run. A lot of people like to run quick slants here. So this is where I'm actually going to go to my cover four defense here. Um, and we're going to drop drop some zones, able to get that good run defense there. And that's going to bring up a fourth and two. Now he's going right back to the line of scrimmage. So you can almost guarantee he's going to run the ball. Um, and we're trying to get our defense set up here. And we should not have done what we did. We I think I accidentally ran commit. So good job by him. I shouldn't have done that. That was probably a, that was a very bad play call. So we got a good drive. 
Um, but I feel fairly okay with that. I mean, we forced him to drive. We had him in a fourth down on the two-yard line, and he chose to go for it. He converted it. We played very bad defense on that fourth down. That's on us. What I should have done was I should have I should have sent, and see it's eleven play seventy nine yard. That's what this that's what it forces. You know, it forces people to drive. You're not always gonna box everybody. But what I probably should have done, and of course he's gonna go to this onside kick. This is a mistake by me to not. Um, if he gets this, this is great. Yeah. Okay. We got lucky. Um, you can if you're on the defensive side of the ball, never ever pick your play before they do. Um, it just it just keeps it from stuff like that from happening. It's just stupid stuff like that that just. Uh, drives me crazy. But anyways, um, what I probably should have done on that defensive drive right there is I probably should have moved into – I was trying to do it. I was just a little bit behind. I should have just called cover four and then basically used the middle of the field and then had – you know I think that would have worked relatively well against what he was trying to do. Um, here, PA boot over. And I actually have a quick tip for you guys, and I haven't talked about this to really anybody. Even people that have bought the ebook don't know this. When you're rolling out, it used to be you just wanted to scramble. What I like to do now when I roll out from PA boot over is I just like to kind of roll. Just like to kind of roll. Because it, it, you can get the ball out a lot quicker and a lot more precise when you do it that way. Now, um, right here, we're going to go to a little bit of a man beater. Um, this is just the flood concept on the left side. The biggest thing here is, yep, and that's exactly what we wanted to have happen. We figured he'd be in zone coverage. Um, and as you can see there, Val Valdez Scantling, that corner out from Mesh is probably the most underrated play in the bunch tight end offense because it literally beats every single zone in the game. Um, okay, so here what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our red zone play out of this single back trio. Now, a lot of people think that you're going to blitz. That's what most people think. Um, that's kind of what he did last time. Um, so here, this is where that route to Devontae Adams is absolutely just torches man coverage on that left side, and we're able to get in the end zone. Offense is looking good. Defense has got to kind of answer back. Um, really, you know, it's that's a good drive. That's a really good drive by the offense. It's pretty much flawless execution. Um, defense has to come back out and, and really stand tall. We really need to at least hold him to three. Ideally, we hold him to um, a turnover or something like that. He's going to be trying to push the ball down the field because he's going to try to go down and score before the two-minute warning, or uh, not before the two-minute warning, but before the half. That's definitely going to be his game plan. So uh, he has all the time in the world right now, so if he wants to run the ball, he could do that. But I'm just kind of based on the way he's doing some things. I think he's going to press a little bit. And so that's where this defense starts. When you, when, because of the, the amount of pressure my offense will put on people because it's just such a powerful offense, the defense can come back out and basically say, you know, you're going to feel like you have to press, meaning you have to push the ball, push the ball, push the ball, and this defense is is fairly decent against that kind of strategy. So, anyways, it uh, looks like he's going back to single back wing tight. Now, when I see something like this, I almost always audible into my nickel normal um, just because I think it, 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 it doesn't necessarily stop the run better than 3-3-5 wide. It just does, I think, better against the two tight end type stuff that a lot of people like to run. Um, you know, I could be wrong on that, but that's what I like to do. Okay, so now he's going to tight offset, tight in. We're going to play um, kind of a cover two, kind of a cover two on that side. And we're going to get him, I think. Kevin King over the top, yep. Kevin King, I'll tell you what, one of the things I really like about this guy as a corner is he really, and we're just going to kind of like try to set up some blocks here. That's probably bad, bad decision making by me but anyways we get the ball we got two minutes and 29 seconds now right here you don't need a touchdown offensively part of game management part of understanding the deeper pieces of the game what we don't want to do you know again if we score seven that's great but what we really don't want to do is we don't want to give him the ball back before half like we could score three not give him the ball before half because we get ball at half right so that's that's another little piece so that's where again when from a play play calling perspective you might want to call something like what i'm about to call uh, right here which is this motion out hitch route you know just kind of a honestly kind of just a safe play call here depending on what he does and it looks like he is going to go with zone so we're just going to take this and another thing that I need to do that I did not do is I need to go ahead and play on conservative. Now, if I wanted to go down and just sling it and score, I could probably do that. This is something simple that will help, and it's helped me a lot. 
Because sometimes I lose games that I feel like I was a better player in, and you're probably there with me. You've probably lost games against people that you feel like you were definitely the better player because you didn't manage the clock well. You did it. You you maybe got a fumble or you you know did something right. Um, going in conservative, I'm already in field goal range. So really, the goal here again, I can, and I can do all this from passing, right? I don't have to run necessarily, but because because I think people sometimes what they do is they don't they just don't call conservative pass plays, right? If you would just call a conservative passing play, you would probably be relatively, you know, okay. So, anyways, we're going to go to inside switch right here. He's running a lot of man, um, so we'll see what he does here. He isn't going to go zone. Um, this route right here, very conservative play call, very conservative, right? It's a two-yard curl route, and if he's in zone coverage, all the zones will pull away. All of the zones will pull away if he's in that coverage. So because he's running so much cover four, right, again, if we score, that's fine. We just want to make sure that he doesn't have the opportunity to score. That's really the goal. Um, you know, even if we if we give him back, you know, 15 seconds and stuff, that's one thing. But we really don't – we want to try to make sure we really don't give him anything more than that. All right, so here everything's kind of breaking down, but he's but everybody in coverage. So we're going to come out and we're just going to slide, right? Uh, we're going to slide. We're going to continue to take clock. And that's what I'm talking about, some of those game management pieces. Those are reasons that I, if, if I look back at the why I lost a lot of games, it's normally because I don't do this well. It's it's normally because I don't do this well. Normally my scheme is fine, but I try to force something instead of taking a sack. When I Like like if, 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 if he really blitzes the crap out of me, I'm going to take a sack, right? And I, I can hit hold left trigger and flick the or click the right joystick in and here he's going to go man coverage okay so i'm just going to back away back away back away pocket pocket now he blitzed okay perfect there we go and he got oh i almost got screwed on that one that was actually a really good user by him and that's what you know again we say mistakes now hopefully he doesn't quit out about that because i don't think that would be a smart decision he probably could come back out here but obviously he's going to be frustrated about that i didn't think he could jump that i was i was but, I mean, good job by him. I just didn't think he'd be able to get out there on that. Okay, so now we're in a situation where um, we've got whatever, however much time we have. Um, 20 seconds, right? So now I'm in a situation where now it makes a lot of sense to try to get a first down here. If we don't get a first down, we're just going to, again, take a sack or whatever. So he's obviously going to press. He's been running a lot of man coverage here. So, okay, he pressed, he pressed, he pressed, he pressed. Okay, so we've got 16 seconds. We still have plenty of time, plenty of time, plenty of time. And here's what we're going to do. We're just going to take the timeout, and we hit Tavon Austin over the middle, and now we take a timeout. The reason why is we can at least run the ball one time. We can at least run the ball one time. So, uh, basically, we're going to put all of our audibles in here. And this, this is about as good as we possibly could have done from a game management perspective if you take away the fact that we almost threw an interception. Uh, I felt like he shouldn't have been able to jump that, but uh, clearly he knows something I don't. So, anyway, strong, tight, and then I'm coming out, and, and, and basically we're going to look at this. If he gives it up, right, we're still on conservative, so we're not going to fumble, okay? At least I don't think we will. So we're doing everything we can control. With six seconds... It takes about one to two seconds to run the ball if you run it quick. So essentially all I'm trying to do is just kind of see what he's doing. Now here he's showing me this. So I'm going to audible to stretch and I'm going to flip the play. reason why I like to flip plays is it just kind of messes up the adjustments. And you can get these motion snaps here. And just trying to get in quick and we're able to get in for the touchdown. That's a big touchdown. But we were completely fine if we get a field goal. Because again, when you play a game of Madden, this is just my rule of thumb. You always want to be trying to get to a three possession lead. And the th the in my opinion the best three possession lead that you can get to is a 17 point lead. You're trying to get to a 17 point lead. So that's why I'm okay taking three there because I know I'm getting ball out of half and then I can go down out of half and have plenty of and basically take more clock and be up three possessions if I don't make any mistakes. That's where I say the game management piece is so so critical to any success cuz now he gets the ball back with 4 seconds. I, I took a lot of clock on that drive. Still passed every play, right? I took a lot of clock. I threw, I think, one incomplete pass. Should have been probably a pick. He's probably going to come out an onside kick. So I'm going to wait here. I still don't personally know. Like when they say kickoff here, sometimes I do this and I'll click 
kickoff and they come out and they're an onside kick. So I don't like to test that. I like to wait all the way and then okay, he's in kickoff. Okay, we'll go on, we'll go with regular kickoff. So I don't know for sure how to tell if he's an onside kick or not onside kick. That's just my you know maybe I just don't know that. But but I I, I get so many people that onside kick me, uh, and I also don't. I normally don't return kicks now because I find that I fumble once every other game. So for me, it's just not worth it. But now look at the situation we're in. Now we're up by 14. There's 10 minutes left in the ball game, right? Offense has been phenomenal, but we've also done a really good job, I think, of managing the game a little bit. So, you know, you, you, you obviously want to still have the fire and you want to put up points and all, and, and, and that's part of you know, who, who I am as a player, but, you know, you also don't want to just continue to allow stuff. But there you see again, there's that delay fade. And that's what's really nice about it. When you don't, when you don't hold a right trigger, I find it makes it much better. I really, you know, again, it, it just makes it much better. So right here, this is, a again, a good time to go to our counter play. Uh, we've ran this, ran this, ran this. Now we're going to go to this right here. Um, he's shown that he's going to run a lot of man-to-man. -man. So we're going to do a motion snap on to Adams. Just in case he's in just man. And I can't snap the ball. Okay. And right there, Tavon Austin. That's the beauty of that route right there. I mean, it, it, it sometimes doesn't look open, but it, I'm telling you right now, it's mostly open. So now take a look at the clock. Now take a look at this right here. Mentally understand. So now we just need three points. We have three points. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to throw a pick. That's the biggest thing. If we throw a pick, if we fumble the ball, if we do any of that stuff, that's where we're going to get ourselves in trouble. So that's where I like to maybe go to something like this. It's a safe play call. Um, you know, we're just, you know, we're just doing this right here. So uh, again, we're just going to try to hit the running back here because he's been running a lot of man. We'll take a sack. That's fine. Not too worried about that. I could have even fell down as the quarterback because again, the clock is his enemy. We're about to go up by three possessions. So this is how you close a game out and make sure that you don't lose the game against players that you shouldn't be losing to. Okay, that that to me is is super super important um, because if you're you know you just don't want to it's just not worth it to do that. So uh, hey, right here we're gonna run the ball. We're just gonna keep ourselves in field goal range. Uh, audible over here to a read option play and just to kind of see how it looks here. And Aaron Jones, we almost snuck through that hole right there. That's going to give us a couple yards. Just keep us in field goal range here. Um, he's pressing. You can tell. He's blitzing. He's he's amped. He's going. He may be even mad at us. You know what I mean? So when you have somebody like this, to me it's not worth it to force something if you can just easily just take it. You know, take what they give you, take what they give you, take what they give you. So like right here, we're going to do this setup right here. And just see, we're max. We've got a lot of protection, and we're just going to lob it up. Click on. We're going to aggressive catch that, and Devontae Adams is making a huge play for us. And now we're in a really good situation. We could potentially go up by 21. But you know, again, the offense is super, super good. Uh, right there, Devontae. I don't know if he had double me activated or not, but the reason I I could have rack caught that. It would have been a little bit more risky to rack catch that. I wanted to make sure I was safe. If I get an incompletion, I just take my field goal and I go by 17. But instead, I did it like that. So, you know, again, that's just kind of some, some game management type of thing. Uh, right here, uh, what we're going to do is we're just simply going to go to the dive. But we're going to flip it on him. Once again, we're flipping it. And I like to play make of the dive to the backside. I think the fullback gets a better block here. And there you go. We're in. Touchdown. So, again, offense is in the description. Defense is in the description. He's going to go ahead and clit out. He's down by three possessions. It's darn near impossible for him to come back as long as I don't make any mistakes. I could literally kneel the ball out every single time on defense to be able to lock this up. But if you want to come by, catch me play live, uh, I'll be on tonight at 10 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the gameplay, and we'll see you on stream tonight.